Today's video sponsor is GGG Mall, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. She take the world of my shoulders If it was ever hard to move Hello guys, I'm Shin Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel now with my hair restrained. And yeah, not the channel that has the hair restrained me. Of course. Just for today's video we have the tutorial of how to overclock the RTX 4070 Ti. I have lots of these overclocking tutorials like for the 3050, 3060, 3070, now for the 4070 Ti. Then I have lots on the AMD side, 580, 570, 6600, 6600 XT, 6700 XT, 6800, 6950 XT. I have lots of them, even the 7900 XT X tutorials, okay? So I have lots of them. Uh, and now we are doing it just for the 4070 Ti and just overclocking. Although I will just give you a mild hint of how to undervolt um, on this card as well, if you want to, of course. But before going to the actual overclocking part, let's go to the common questions. Common questions. The first one is, will this void my warranty? No. Brands just can't prove that you overclocked. Okay, they can't. If you pick a card, if your card is defective, if your card somehow burned, even if they wanted to prove um, that the card was overclocked in order to not have to give you an, a new one, they can't. It won't void your warranty, okay? So you're good. The second one is, will this break my GPU? No. This won't break your GPU, like I said before, unless your GPU is already defective somehow and you are pushing it to its limits or unless you have a really, really bad power supply because that may happen. If you have a really bad power supply, the power supply may actually fry your GPU or the power supply itself um, if you try to do this, okay? So do not buy time bombs that look like power supplies, okay? Just get a good power supply, do not ever cheap on a power supply. It doesn't mean that you have to buy something like a 750 watts or 1000 watts gold certifi certified, I mean, but do not buy time bombs that look like PSUs, okay? Get a decent brand PSU like Corsair, Cooler Master and so on, um, Seasonic for example, and get, and get at least a 600, 650 watts bronze, okay? You should be fine with that. So once again, no, it won't break your GPU. The max that can happen actually is for your computer to crash and you just reboot the computer and it's good to go. And the third and final question is, will this reduce the lifespan of my graphics card? No, it won't, okay? It won't. Graphics cards and processors and almost every computer hardware is built to run 24-7 under the max stress load. So even if you overclock your card to the maximum possible, okay, it just won't reduce its lifespan because the cards are prepared to that unless you're running super high temperatures, okay? If you're running super high temperatures, it may reduce the lifespan a bit, but really nothing that you have to worry about because if the card won't last like 10 years, it will last seven or eight. It will mildly reduce the lifespan if your temperatures are very high, which will not be the case here. So it will not reduce your card's lifespan. Now, as for the overclocking part, you can use several sets of software to actually do it. You can use the NVIDIA's inbuilt software overclocking feature, which is a crap, sorry, NVIDIA. You can use Asus tweaks, you can use several other brands tweaks, but the better one is MSI Afterburner, okay? And that's the one we're gonna use. So you just go to the website, you download MSI Afterburner, install it, and you're good to go. That's all you have to do. After that, you run MSI Afterburner. If you don't have the icon like I do here, you just go to the search bar, search MSI Afterburner, bam, and run the app, okay? it will appear like this. It will tell you the card that you have, GeForce RTX 4070 Ti in this case, the driver version that you're running, 528.24, and all the other options like the core voltage, the core clock, memory clock, and then the fan, uh, the, the fan tab that where you actually have the temperature limit, 
the fan speed and the power limit, okay? Power limit is one of the most important settings in my opinion. Um, and if you just want to overclock without any sorts of undervolting or at least reducing your power limit, if you don't want to reduce your power limit and just want the maximum performance, just go and grab the power limit to the max you can. In this case, we have 110% power limit. In some scenarios, you may have 120, 130, 140. It depends on your GPU model, okay? According to your GPU model, usually higher tier models have a higher power limit. Uh, since this one is just the Trinity, the Zotac Trinity, um, it's a lower end model, the power limit is only 10%, but it, it is more than enough. It is actually more than you need, so 110%. And I'm telling you that this is one of the most important settings because raising the power limit doesn't mean that the GPU will automatically consume more power. It just means that the GPU will consume more power if it needs more power to perform better. Your GPU will consume different amounts of power of power draw um, depending on the on the scenario, de even depending on the game. Some games will consume more power, some games will consume less power, depending on how the game can actually take advantage of the GPU. Uh, for example, games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla consume less power. It's it is what it is. Games like Control consume and t take the GPU to its extreme and consume a lot more power. So the card can consume like 180 watts on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but just for, uh, but not just, but like 250 watts on Control. That's how it works. Let's say that um, the card can, can go up to 250 watts when you raise the power limit. It will go to the 250 watts and it will increase the core clocks automatically so it will perform better, okay? But in a situation where you are not power restricted, well, the power draw will be exactly the same. Okay, but in situations where you are power restricted and the card just won't perform better because it is restricted to that power draw, raising the power limit alone will increase the performance as well, okay? After that, you have other things to actually increase the performance, which are the core clock and the memory clock. But take in consideration that if you are power limited, Increasing the core clock and the memory clock usually won't bring any performance gains because once again, you are power limited by your BIOS and the GPU will automatically try to maintain that power limit, doesn't matter the clocks, okay? And that will actually reduce the performance or at least it won't bring you any kind of gains. That's why it is so important to raise the power limit and then come to the clocks. Now, as for the clocks, I found that my GPU is able to do 120 megahertz over the stock frequency. Um, and in order to put it to the maximum stability, I usually use it at 115 or 110, but usually 115. I could do 120, 125, and in some scenarios, in some games, even 150, but in others, that would lead to crashes, black screens, and so on, because the GPU just wasn't stable enough. At 115 megahertz plus 115, it is perfectly stable, okay? Uh, how do you know it is stable or not, or how do you do it? I advise you to start with 50, 50 megahertz, because Every GPU will do 50 uh, megahertz and then do increments of, let's say, 20 megahertz. Go from 50 to 70 megahertz. Test a really heavy game for, let's say, 10 minutes. Uh, let's say Cyberpunk 2077. Um, Control, for example. Even some Call of Duties. Just test a really heavy game uh, for the GPU without V-Sync, of course, to let the GPU push its maximum. If it is stable at plus 70, then try plus 90. If it is once again stable after 10 or 15 minutes with plus 90, then try plus 110. If it is stable once again, plus 130, and so on till you reach your maximum, um, your maximum frequency um, that is stable. So your maximum stability on a certain frequency. For me, like I told you before, the maximum frequency that I can put stable is plus 115. After this, it will start crashing and it will be unstable, actually bringing less FPS in some case scenarios due to not being stable, okay? Then press apply and you're good to go. After you actually find the stability on your core clock, you can go to the memory clock and let's do the same process. Usually, and I repeat, usually on the 4070 Ti cards, usually all cards will do 
plus 500 megahertz because this is GDDR6X. So they will do usually plus 500 megahertz in all cards. Okay, so let's do the plus 500 as a base. After this, you can just go, for example, with increments of 100 or 200. You can go, let's say, 700. Once again, test 10 minutes in a really heavy game. If 700 megahertz is stable, then raise it to 900 megahertz. If 900 megahertz is stable, once again, you can try, for example, 1000 megahertz. If 1000 megahertz is stable, once again, 1200 megahertz. And you keep doing this till you find your maximum stability in a certain setting. So imagine that you go to 1500 megahertz and you test the game for 10 minutes um, and the game actually crashes. Then you know it isn't stable. Go back to 1400 megahertz. Test once again, uh, let's say 10 minutes, 15 minutes. If it starts crashing again or if it starts actually stuttering or so on, go back to 1300 megahertz. If you play with these settings for let's say half an hour, 20 minutes and it is stable, then keep those settings. If somehow after two, three or four hours of gaming you have another black screen, then you know that these settings are still not stable, go back to 1200 megahertz and so on. As for my GPU, it seems that I actually got lucky this time. Finally, it's actually the first GPU where I got lucky on the VRAM overclocking and I can go up to the maximum presented on MS Afterburner, which is 2000 MHz on the VRAM. But at least most of you should be able to get at least 1000, sorry, 1000. Some of you, maybe 1500 with no issues, and some others, like me, can actually go to 2000, okay? But do not try to reach super high values right from the beginning because your CP, your PC might just crash out of the box. And for the beginners, that may actually be scary, but your PC will just reboot, or you may just have to reboot your computer, and after that, it will be just fine, so don't worry. Start from the bottom and go till you reach your maximum stable frequency, okay? That's my opinion. Now, as for the core voltage, this is one of those things that I advise you to not mess with, okay? If it actually, allowed you to undervolt a GPU, so kind of go like minus 10 or something like that to undervolt a GPU, that would be cool, but that's not the case. It just allows you to increase the voltage and not to decrease it. So for me, just not mess with the voltage at all, okay? This actually might fry your, your GPU. Uh, I do believe that the BIOS has a maximum limit for voltage, but I'm not certain, okay? So this actually might fry your GPU. And unless you're trying to do super ultra mega, hyper high overclocking profiles, this won't be necessary at all. Just go to, to the zero, mess with the power limit, core clock and memory clock, and you'll already have some very, very nice performance gains in some scenarios. If you want to undervolt, you can use, for example, the the curve editor, but I don't really like to use it because it takes a lot of time, more than it should actually, it takes a lot of time, it is not intuitive, um, and in my opinion, it is simply not worth it because if you want to overclock, you can simply decrease the power limit and it will automatically adjust the voltage, the, the core clocks and so on, so it's just way easier to undervolt per se, decreasing the power limit. You'll just lose some performance, but at the same time, the power draw will decrease a lot as well. So yeah, that's how you do it. Sorry for the long video, but I actually wanted to explain the best I could. Once again, power limit is the most important, then go to the core clock, then go to the memory clock, okay? This will bring you uh, a nice performance boost at a cost of a little bit more power draw, which is not nice. Not nice, which is not, not bad at all. Not bad at all, and I use it on a daily basis, okay? So, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching once again, and see you in the next video.
all hidden behind that poster that leads to the real world. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes, sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here? Anyone here?